Hi, welcome to this second video on my sports AI Lite. Uh, the first video was showing you how to download and install my sports AI Lite. And in this second video, I'm going to give a quick tour of how to create a model and run off some ratings for the day's racing. Okay, let's get started. Um, what I'm not going to do in this video is do a sort of full tour of various machine learning concepts and how my sports AI handles them. What I'm going to do is get straight to the point and look at how you create a model in, in my sports AI light. Um, and hopefully that'll take us about four or five minutes and we can then uh, run off some ratings for tomorrow's racing. Okay, let's first look at the my sports AI my sports AI light window here. You can see that it's split into different sections, so I'll just do a quick tour around the various sections first. Up in the top right here, we've got a, a window that shows the name of the file that's loaded, which is the flat data for 2019. It tells you how many rows there are in this file. It's a CSV file. There are 59,757 rows and there are 67 columns and you've got a snapshot of the first few rows here in this second window. If you scroll, if I scroll across you can see all the various fields and uh, some uh, example values. Okay, one other point I'd like to make uh, is that there are 67 columns in this file but in the full-blown My Sports AI software there are more input columns data columns and then just 67 there are quite a few more because uh, this is expanded through different versions okay so that's a, uh, the first two windows down here we can see that you get a an actual histogram of the particular input field that you move the cursor over so if I put it on draw we get a histogram of draw if I put it on the number of runners, we get a histogram of a number of runners uh, that have occurred in each race. So let's look at draw. We can see that the histogram here tells us that there are most runners from draw one and draw two, which is not surprising because every race will have a draw one and draw two, and then it gradually declines. So that's what we'd expect of the histogram for the draw. Now, the other thing is when we go and look at this window up here, we can see that having highlighted draw it tells us what the name of the drawer is oh sorry what the name of the feature is and I'll use the term feature to describe input columns because uh, that's a, f a fairly common machine learning term f features rather than sort of input columns or parameters it's, so the feature here is draw it's telling us that there are 34 instances so 34 unique instance instances so clearly um, we've had races with draws 1 to 34 occurring throughout the file. There are 59,757 occurrences as we'd expect because there was 59,757 rows over here. It also tells us that there were 97 missing rows of draw. Now this is not unusual with machine learning data that you have some missing values and in this particular case uh, the missing values are almost certainly due to certain tracks having races where there was no stalls and hence no draw numbers. I mean Salisbury is a, a good example with long distance races. So it tells you if there, how many missing values there are. Uh, it tells us what the average is, the mean, and it tells us what the max value is and the min value. And this, this window will update for whatever field or feature I run the cur I put the cursor over. So you put the cursor over a field, the histogram updates over here, and the um, information window up here updates as well. Okay, let's get straight down to creating a model. I'm not gonna cover these here. We'll cover those in another video perhaps. But we're gonna be using uh, an algorithm called GBM. There's only two algorithms available in the, the light version, GBN and K nearest neighbor. We're going to be using GBN. 
Now that what I'm going to do in this video is create some a model for for flat handicaps. Now this data as you can see has all types of races in it. So if we're going to create a model for flat handicaps I've, I've got to slice the data. I've got to extract just the handicaps and leave all the other races out. And the way to do that is put a tick in the slice data column alongside race type and again I'll go up and click slice data and then what I have to do in this window is highlight handicap because I want to slice on handicap to slice out just the handicap for you, uh, handicap rows click slice data and then you'll notice that the number of rows has decreased significantly and the only um, race types being displayed certainly in this snapshot of the first few races are handicap races so we've sliced the data on handicaps to get just handicap races now we can try and create a model for handicap races now I'm going to um, select some fields for our model the purpose of this is not to create necessarily a a, uh, a recommended model or a, um, a model that perhaps would be one we would use uh, for future use it's really to demonstrate the software so I'm going to pick um, the Prev LTO if I can find it it's down here here we go I'm going to pre pick Prev LTO I'm also going to pick pounds beaten last time out now there's a help function up here which if you click on this will give you a help screen that describes all of the input features and what they actually mean. So you can see from here that Prev LTO is the days between the last run and the previous run. And the pounds beaten LTO is how far a horse was beaten in its last race expressed in pounds. So if you're in doubt about what any of these fields of input features mean, you can check the help. You also um, get a reminder or a, an explanation up in this, in this window here. It'll tell you how far beaten in last race expressed in pounds. Okay, so I've, in, I've selected two input features so far. Um, I'm going to also go for two more. I'm going to go with the pace figure. So the pace figure from the last run. And I'm also going to go with the good run rate. Okay. So we've selected some input features. Obviously, you can select these if you're going to test the software but then you're free to try and use some other combinations of features and see if you can come up with something more suitable now the way you you may in the past be familiar with system building software and if you were building a system using pace figure pounds beaten prev lto and good run rate even if you were using some software, you would then simply do some random experimentation. You'd perhaps start to choose some values for these different input features, test it and see whether it made a profit. And then you would tweak them and change them and test it again and see if it made a profit. And then you would tweak it and change it and so on. You can probably appreciate that that's a, a very slow and tedious way of going about the task. Well, Effectively, that's what this machine algorithm, machine learning algorithm, is going to do. It's going to find the optimum way of combining these four input features to maximize um, the win rate. So it's going to do all the work that you would do if you were trying to build a system, but it's going to do it far more efficiently and far more effectively than you could do just through a manual process of trial and error. Okay, so we've selected those four input features. We've also automatically got selected this feature at the bottom, FinPOS, which is in the predict column here. So that's the 
the item or the feature we're trying to predict. We're trying to predict FinPOS. And as you can see from FinPOS here, if I put the cursor over it, you can see that FinPOS contains either a, a naught or a one. If the horse won, it's got a one in this field. And if it lost, it's got a zero. So we've selected input features. We've got a target feature to try and predict, which is FinPOS. What we need to now do is create the model. So if I click on create model, we get a second window up. And I'm going to do a train test split on this model, which is what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to split this data into roughly about 80% of the races and train the model on it that's that means it's going to go and try and find the best optimum combination of of uh, of weighting and um combining these four input features the other 20 percent is what it's going to use when it's finally done its training and created the model it's going to then actually execute the the model on the final 20 percent worth of data and it's going to report in here the results so if I click run model this will take um, a few seconds to run and here come the results now you've got uh, lines of results here what it's telling you is that in each race this top line here is telling you how you would have got on if you'd bought back to the top ranked or the top rated horse in each race this line is telling you how you would have got on if you'd back the second top rated third top rated, fourth top rated, and so on. Now, if we look at the columns, take the top rated as a starting point. If we looked at the top rated, we'd have had 829 bets. That's in the test split. You'd have won 19.42% of the time. You made a profit of 47 pounds 82, if you'd had a pound on every horse. The maximum drawdown would have been 58 pounds 71. The return on investment was 5.77%. If we'd bet it to variable stakes, in other words, if we'd had a, enough money on to win a pound, so at even money we'd have had a pound on, at two to one we'd have had 50p on, and so on, then we would have, would, would have won 14.26 variable points, and that would have had a return of investment of 6.95%. And then over here we've got how you would have got on if you would have backed the horses to a, a pound level stake, but only when the predicted bet fair odds were less in the model or from the model than the actual bet fair odds. In other words, value bets. And as you can see, uh, there's some green over here as well. And you'll notice from this that where there's where the where the uh, results are green, it's profit. Where it's red, it's a loss. We can see that there's a nice gradient to the win rate. Top rated are winning much more than second top, th third top, fourth top, fifth top, and so on. Generally, it's uh, uh, the higher rank, the, the more wins, which is what we'd like to see. And uh, there's some little diagram down here that shows you the importance of the features. And we can see that the pounds beaten last time out was certainly the most predictive feature. And the pace fig was the less or least predictive feature. Okay, uh, that's a very quick overview, and I'm not going to get too embroiled in some of these other buttons up here and what they do. What I'm going to do is close this down now, and what I'm going to do is load the decks, load the declarations up for tomorrow's declaration, for tomorrow's races, I should say. And it's loaded up 30 runners into a file called todaysdex.csv. That's done that. So you need you need an internet connection, obviously, when you're running this because it will load it up from the internet. Uh, it's loaded up 30 runners. Now that's a feature of my sports AI Lite. It will not load all the declarations up for tomorrow. It will just load up the first 30. That's one of the restrictions. Uh, it is free after all. So. It's loaded up the decks, and now we want to use our model to model the declarations and get some ratings. So the model we've just created and just tested, we're going to apply it to tomorrow's runners, or tomorrow's 30 declarations that we've loaded. And we can see it's now done that, and it's 
put the declarations into, into a file called today's rats.csv. Now, if I go to the place where the software was stored. Now, when you were loading up the, when you were create, when you were installing the software, you, you can install it into any folder you want. You don't have to put it into the default folder, but mine's in the default folder. And in there is the file that it's just created, today's rats.csv, which is the ratings for tomorrow. So if I double click on that, Excel will load it up. And uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting you to see this, but I'll try and reduce the size. There we go. If I now bring that down, make it a bit bigger, and we can see we've got the ratings for tomorrow's race. Uh, we've got the ratings for the, I'll just move this over. Okay. We've got the ratings for the 1825 and the 1755 at Bath. And top rated is Razor Glass. That's the rating it's produced and the Betfair price. And top rated in the Bath 555 is Daysac. Top rated with, here's the rating of 0 0.16 and the Betfair price. So this is what, this is the Betfair price I was referring to when I was talking about value bets. So if the Betfair actual price was larger than that, then uh, according to the value of bets, it would it would back them, and if not, it wouldn't. Um, and well, obviously, when I was looking at backing, uh, the results were backing all the top rateds. In that case, tomorrow, regardless of price, we're backing Razor Glass and we're backing Daysac. Okay, that's. Uh, a quick run through on how you can create a model and how you can run off the declaration, uh, sorry, run off the ratings for the following day. Let me just close that down. You can, of course, then save the model if you want to run it again the next day or days after that. So I'm not going to do that because this is just a demo. But uh, that's pretty much it for this video. There's a hell of a lot more we can cover here on this, but I just wanted to get across uh, the basic idea of how to create a model. Uh, there are other videos on my uh, YouTube um, channel, which you can look at that give a bit more detail about some of these other functions, like what one hot encode means and scaling and some of the functions on the second uh, window that we saw up. Uh, but um, as I said, I just wanted to get across a basic introduction um, to create a model. Have a go yourself and uh, I'd be interested to hear if people try some other input features to create a model of their own and how they got on with the two races at Bath tomorrow. So uh, you can let me know via Twitter uh, or directly by email and uh, or indeed uh, underneath this video YouTube video, leave comments indicating how you got on with your experimentation. Thanks for watching and uh, let me know uh, with a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully I'll be producing some more in the uh, near future. Thank you.